Welcome to Personal Trainer Cooking. Before we go any further, please adjust my voice to the speed you like. Is this a good speed for you? 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 Getting ready. Don't touch the power button. You're ready to start cooking tasty dishes from all over the world. Personal trainer, cooking. Hello, let's get cooking.
Is this a good speed for you? Welcome to Personal Trainer Cooking. Before we... Is this... Getting ready. Don't touch the power button. You're ready to start cooking tasty dishes from all over the world. Personal Trainer. Cooking. Hello? Time's up. Thank you. 
Come again? All right, let's get going. The first step is to prepare the baking pan for the brownie mix. You'll need an 8 inch square baking pan and parchment paper. The first step is to prepare the baking pan for the brownie mix. You'll need an 8 inch square baking pan and parchment paper. Lay the parchment inside the baking pan and crease along the sides of the pan. Make diagonal cuts in each corner of the parchment. Line the baking pan with the parchment so that it fits neatly inside. The next step is to sift the flour, cocoa powder, and baking powder. You'll need a fine sieve, a mixing bowl, and a whisk. Place the fine sieve over the bowl and put the all-purpose flour and the cocoa powder in it. Add the baking powder. Sift the flour, cocoa powder, and baking powder into the bowl below by stirring with the whisk. This refers to the method of passing flour and other powdered ingredients through a sieve to make them finer and remove lumps. The next step is to cut the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board, a kitchen knife, and a small bowl. Peel the banana. Cut the peeled banana into one quarter inch round slices. Cut round ingredients evenly crosswise to make round slices. Roughly chop the walnuts. Chop the milk chocolate into very fine pieces and place it in a small bowl. Preheat the oven to 325 degrees. This refers to heating the oven beforehand in order to ensure that food is cooked at the correct temperature. That's it for preparations. It's now time to melt the butter. You'll need a saucepan and a small bowl. Put a little water in the saucepan and heat it on the stove over low heat. This refers to when a stove is at a low heat setting. On a gas stove, this is when the flames are not high enough to touch the pan. Put the butter in the small bowl and put it in the saucepan of hot water. When the butter has melted, remove the bowl. Put the bowl of chocolate in the same saucepan of hot water. Use a spoon to stir the chocolate until it melts completely. Then turn off the heat. The next step is to make the brownie mixture. You'll need a mixing bowl and a whisk. Make sure the bowl is completely dry. Then break the eggs into it and use the whisk to beat them. Add the brown sugar and whisk until the mixture starts to lighten. Add the melted chocolate. Next, pour in the melted butter and mix well. Add the bananas and walnuts, then mix all of the ingredients together. Now add the sifted flour, cocoa, and baking powder. Use a rubber spatula to stir the mixture thoroughly. Pour the batter into the baking pan and smooth out the surface to make it level. Put the baking pan into the 325 degree oven and bake for about 35 minutes. The next step is to see if the brownies have baked all the way through. You'll need a skewer and put the baking pan into the The next step is to see if the brownies have baked all the way through. You'll need a skewer and a wire rack. Insert the skewer into the center of the brownies. If it comes out clean, the brownies are ready. Place the baking pan with the brownies on a wire rack and allow them to cool a little. Freshly baked items that are removed from their containers while still hot can lose their shape, so they are left to cool. Remove the brownies along with the parchment paper from the baking pan and place them on the wire rack to fully cool. 
Remove the parchment paper, transfer to a dish, and cut into individual servings. They're ready to eat. Nice work. Let's get started. The first step is to slice the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. First, remove the stems from each tomato. Have them lengthwise and cut them into half moon slices around one quarter inch thick. Cut long round ingredients in half lengthwise, then cut them evenly crosswise into semicircles. 
Cut the mozzarella into slices around one quarter inch thick, the same thickness as the tomato slices. That's it for preparations. You'll need a serving dish to arrange the ingredients. Arrange alternate slices of tomato and mozzarella on the serving dish. Sprinkle small pieces of basil over the salad. Cover it with plastic wrap and refrigerate to chill before serving. Next, prepare a mixing bowl to make the dressing in. Put some salt and the balsamic vinegar in the bowl and mix them together well. Add the extra virgin olive oil a little at a time and mix it in thoroughly. Pour the dressing over the chilled salad and add coarsely ground black pepper to taste. It's ready to eat. Nice work.